Live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here is your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are broadcasting live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from, signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm psyched to have two analysts here uh, in the industry from Forrester Research to break it down, to really talk about the horses on the track and really assess, commentate, analyze Google's moves in context to the industry players, uh, leaders, and uh, people trying to get into the business. So our, our guests are John Reimer, Vice President, Principal Analyst, and uh, Dave Bartoletti, Principal Analyst at Bolted Forrester. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so usually I do this with Dave and we just kind of go into one big circle, just talking all day long, but it's psyched to have you guys on. I know you guys have a you know, really uh, premier report in the wave coming out platform and you guys have been following these horses for, for a while. Many but now days. we're in a new era. The mainframe, client server, PC, and, it, every, and everywhere in between there's been this disaggregation of skills in IT. I mean, almost like, you know, mainframe days, the glory years. Toga parties, fruit off the trees, developers in-house, big money, big budgets, big iron, glass house, and then client server. In come the, the big six consulting firms. In comes shrink-wrap software. In comes uh, the internet. And then SaaS. IT's been shrunk down from a core company standpoint. And then all of a sudden, well, I take issue with one of those. And now the virtualization wave was slightly different. Okay, so now conversion infrastructure, a little bit of yep. lift, and but now developers go build me this mobile stuff, guys. Just yep. this magic. So, what's your take on all this, guys? Is it, is this force coming from the cloud? Is it coming from mobile? Is it the infrastructure forcing coming the from the customers? Coming from the customer. It's buyers. And what are they saying? Do I do it? I can do it. <laughs> Go ahead, jump in. No, when we say it's coming from the customer, it's coming from the demand side, the requirements. Um, people, are, the, the bottom line here is that people are using software now to engage customers, to find right. them, to engage with them, to support them. And it's a, it is a new golden age. It happens to be cloud-based, it happens to be cloud-fueled because if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, interact with customers through software, you've got to create it way faster than you ever did and you've got to rev it way faster than you ever did. And the old the old uh, platform generations just don't support that. So the, the, last, old way, the last 10 years were not about moving faster in IT. They were about efficiency and consolidation and driving every last dollar out of the data center. And what's, what cloud means to traditional IT teams is they suddenly have to pivot on a dime and react to speed. And it hasn't been about speed. So what you're saying is squeeze the efficiency and dollars out of ever do more with less. Now Absolutely. run. Now run with bare feet That's in the right. winter. That's right. With, with, <laughs> so with I, knives and scissors and everything else. <laughs> That's right. So IT had a great run for 12 years, yeah. right? And, and folks like you're saying that might have felt that they were being pressured in IT came up with this virtualization solution and not just compute, but storage and network to radically consolidate what they're doing. They saved money. They, they, they made the data center a little bit more agile. What they didn't necessarily do is get to market with better, faster, software faster. So you're saying change. virtualization cleaned house a bit, gave a little new blood in there, exactly. some, uh, some, some slack for more cash and investment, to kind of right. set the table, and then converged infrastructure kind of came in quickly behind it. And that was the bedrock to build on. And developers are still knocking on the door, let me in, provision me in the next six months, please, and it just didn't work. Exactly. So that's what, there was like a shift to the cloud, particularly for the customer facing uh, applications, not for the traditional back office yet, because of speed, speed of delivery and responsiveness. So I want to get your take on the buyers, you mentioned buyers, because that's obviously mm -hmm. at the end of the day, money, money fuels business, business needs to make money, IT is supposed to service the business, all that stuff, right? But now buyers are going to spend money, they were buying it from vendors, monolithic software, big license deals, Oracle comes to mind when I think of things like that, mm -hmm. or, and then VMware ultimately had license, but even IBM and others. But who bought those licenses? Um, IT. IT. On behalf of the business. Yeah. So the business That's was the out trend. of the picture. Right. So Emerge Shadow IT. Was that the beginning of the major punch to IT? Was it the beginning of Shadow IT being 
use your credit card, circumvent the process, go directly to the resource? It's, it, oh. Shadow IT's always been there, so it's really nothing new. I think it's more that, I think it's more that, it's more embedded IT that, uh, that really started the movement big time, and it was marketing, sales, uh, and support, which had their own budgets and could circumvent IT when they needed to. And it was off to the races. Where did Salesforce.com come from? Right? It was all sales and marketing groups, sales and support groups initially, then marketing groups spending outside of IT. Well, I'll tell you what I think is new. From, from an IT standpoint, <laughs> infrastructure and operations folks, 10 years ago, no developer in any enterprise could go out and spin up a server in someone else's data center and start writing code there. Right? There was no option to do that. So IT has never had anything coming close to real competition. It's not that it was subterfuge, it's that suddenly something was available. Mm -hmm. So Dell has got Dell World, Dave Vellante's down there with our team setting up the ah, view at Dell World. We got a bunch of Let's talk about Dell. I mean, they made their money on being mail order, build to order, right. which became the reseller play outside of mail order, then they innovated on supply chain. That whole thing was about cutting the middleman out. Now with cloud, what's what I don't know who buys servers anymore. They still got to buy servers, but they didn't buy them and rack them like the old. They're buying them now, workload based. That's right. You're seeing the the Facebook like you know Netflix buy. I have an app, and this is my container, or whatever my truckload. They're buying consolidated appliances. So you're seeing Dell do a lot of partnerships with software companies to build converged cloud appliances. Dell wisely said, we're not going to build our own cloud because we're not going to chase that down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, we want to supply white box infrastructure as much as possible. So what Dell's focusing on, which I think is smart, is this brokerage model. Dell wants to be the best shopping experience for cloud resources, and they're mm -hmm. just starting to roll that out. And that's catalog-based services, if you will. So try to milk the cow as much as you can in the cloud appliance as Amazon and others start to build their own local compute and others. I mean, that's a threat. I mean, well, does, right. so Dell will be services-based, do you think? I mean, does that tell, I mean, I'm trying to figure out, like, where does Dell make their money if their core competency was supply chain and going direct? Well, they think there's going to be a supply chain for cloud, and they want to be in the middle of it. And they're also buying up a lot of software. That's right. And we'll provide services, and that's where the money is. I mean, everybody's a, yeah. everybody's a service provider, everybody's a software company. Everybody's a software company. So you think Dell will overlay on top of existing clouds and be a front end to resources? That's what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a PC. It's a smart move. Yeah. Sounds, like, sounds like a PC. Yeah. The cloud is a big PC. They're going to put a wrapper around it. So the challenge is going to be what value do they add than just a low cost marketplace? Mm -hmm. So I got to ask the platform question because you got a platform report, I'm sure. You have other reports, but I don't have access to the firewall. But um, And we won't uh, give it to and, you. And well, you send me the PDF, I won't share it. Um, <laughs> If you look at the old days, lock in the Microsofts, the Oracles, win the platform, lock the customer in, and never let them leave. And then tooling was like, if you got lucky, you got extra tools every every ten years, new tools. Now it's the other way around. You win the platform, you can go to zero, and you tool up and win on the packaging like Amazon, whether it's retail or cloud. Win that seems services. to be the that seems to be tooling being services where you know the land and expand expansion strategy is pretty much playbook in SaaS mm -hmm. for any company, startup, yep. you know, sure. Splunk, Tableau, you name the list. They got to give, give a little bit, buy as you go, and then once you're in, you get all on the tool inside. So that flips the notion of platforms. Does you, do you guys see it that way? And, and how, how do companies compete that have never operated that? It comes like HP, IBM. Google, in a way, gives away that search engine and mm -hmm. Gmail. Mm -hmm. That's a free platform. Right. They're used to that. But the HPs and the IBMs, for, so some of some of the competition I think is the same in that they the game is to get people committed to your platform. So even even platforms that are open like uh, Amazon's basic platform, it's just VM. So nominally it's open. You can move things in or move things out. But what they're what they're trying to do now is get you to use all those high, those higher level services. You lock you get locked in on those APIs. You're likely to stay. You know, and same with Microsoft, same with Google, etc. Uh, so in that way, it's 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 nothing new. But the, certainly the delivery model is very very different in that um, services is now what you have to provide. So HP has to be more like a telephone company, like a telecommunications company. Very very big change for them. Yeah. This is why I think the the big vendors are are struggling so much. Well, IBM just announced a deal with Twitter, so that no one put Twitter and IBM in the same sentence, except in our crowd chats, where they've been a big user of right. social business. 
and, and they, were, they were also telegraphs to give IBM credit e-business, which we don't use that term anymore. But yeah. you know, social business really means what you guys said on the intro, using software yeah. to do business with customers' customers. So sure. analytics is a big differentiator. So IBM seems to be going all in with Watson yeah. and saying, okay, we'll do cloud with Bluemix, which is Cloud Foundry. They're mm -hmm. betting the ranch and, on Cloud and, Foundry and SoftLayer. And integration. And integration. They've always been an integrator. Yeah. Analytics um, and integration. They can still make some money on that. That's good business. Absolutely. You know, they sure. have the, they Absolutely. Have the on the streets, too. Twitter can collect the data. Somebody's got to do something with it. And everyone's yeah. got amazing analytics tools to bring to the table. Yeah, Watts was pretty impressive. I was, was going to say I'm pretty impressed. So I think IBM's I think, strategy hangs together. I think the yeah. point that you made about disruption in the cloud that, that John alluded to, the important thing to remember is Amazon did not disrupt because they were cheaper. They disrupted because of their pace of innovation. They kept people there by releasing new services every few months that mm -hmm. just worked, mm -hmm. that developers started locking into. That's the challenge for HP and IBM and any large player who's, who's coming from a background where you lock people into a platform and what kept them there was not your pace of innovation, but the cost of switching. You know, I think you got a great point there. I think I really like what you just said. I think that's the, the, the iteration of new services Absolutely. is the new bar that gets leveled. And you know, I call it Amazon the tsunami. How much beach they take in the enterprise will be a subject of the seawall that the other vendors can put up to protect themselves because at right. this pace, they're running away. They're the secretariat right. of the horse race. They're just going to, you, right. you know. It's been a sustained pace of innovation. They've also been very good at not releasing stuff until it's ready, not holding it in these, these endless beta programs. Uh, and I think Amazon really gets criti criticized for their partnership. I've, I've heard a lot of people say mm -hmm. right. they're hard to partner with, sure. and when they partner with you, they'll try to kill you. Um, do you guys agree with that statement? I don't necessarily have data points on that, but Amazon just seems so positioned to really put like an EMC out of this. I mean, I talk about this all the time, and Dave disagrees with me, Dave Vellante. I say, you know, it's not about pure storage and nipping at EMC's heels. It's about Amazon can actually put EMC out of business. If you think about the concept of, if they continue this pace, if I'm EMC, I'm afraid of Amazon, not pure storage. In terms of platform, they can build in storage, yeah, and if, yeah, if EMC loses VMware, yeah. Where, well, where, where I, they're going to be? Well, but let's not they can't lose let's it. not go too too. I'm not far an analyst, here. so I can say I'll go. Well, let's want, not so, to go I, too too far. I don't <laughs> think EMC's going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> but it, it, but the issue is the issue for the EMC's IBM HP is growth. The growth isn't there. You see it in their financial results. They're, they're under a huge amount of pressure. Whereas Amazon. Um, the growth is what 30, 39 percent. Yeah. Most recent report. And they're hiding the ball too. Yeah, and so. Yep. But I mean, they. It, the enterprise, another aspect of this is enterprise is different, as you pointed out. Yeah. I mean, Amazon didn't start out targeting the enterprise. Now they're trying to get more of those workloads. Um, that's what IBM's after, pure, pure yeah. and simple. Google, Microsoft, they all have to figure out a way There's of... There's a graveyard of IT guys trying to win in the enterprise that have come in. I mean, can you talk about why it's so hard for the folks out there? I mean, I, something I talk about all the time on Twitter, it's not easy, whether you're a startup. It used to be in the old days, you could never get into, if you were a startup, you could never get into an enterprise unless you had like a zillion references. But even for these big whales, even Google, even Amazon, the bar it, in the enterprise is high, and it's, it's like, really this is like trip wires everywhere. Well, it's. I think that for me, the as far as I'm concerned, the issue with cloud is that to make the economics of cloud work, you want a standard service, as standard as possible. And enterprise is constantly throwing these weird requirements, these oddball requirements at you. Some of which are real because they come from people like the SEC, but some of which are just idiosyncratic. And how do you how do you achieve that? Well, balance? now you get the data so governance that, problem. Yeah, well, and that, that's what started to change, is that it's going to be very slow in the enterprise. The successful cloud providers have a small set of standardized services, and their attitude is, this is what we've got, you come to us. You fit us. IT enterprise is built around whatever you want, I'll build you a special snowflake, and I'll create a wonderful environment for you, and, and, and it's built around engineering complexity. So we're back to the beginning, because we find enterprises, our clients, are now dropping that attitude that we're That's a right. special snowflake because they need to go fast. Yeah. They need to go fast. And they need to push the developers so, to the front lines where it used to be developers would get pulled into IT. Absolutely. Now the developers move to the front lines where there's creativity mm -hmm. and they got to be close to the action. Now they got to go talk to customers themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, so absolutely. I want you guys to talk about the, um, that dynamic and, and also and specifically the consumption of, your, the, of the customer base, the buyers, how they're consuming these services. You mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. They want software to interact. So the consumption of how they're buying is changing. So I want you to talk about that trend. What specifically do you see the driving force of the consumption of the client on the cloud side? Is it 
gonna, is it going to be um, anything in particular that, that that's the, the leading mega trend there? I mean, obviously everyone says, oh, buy by the drink. But it's, it's bigger than that. There's a whole consumption change going on in cloud from the mm -hmm. customers on how they want to purchase um, yeah. that the old guys are need to figure out. Oh, well, if the... A lot of the a lot of the action is in customer facing software, and a lot of customer facing software is starts off with really, really squishy requirements. So a lot of the reason we see moving people moving away from big software contracts, they're not ready to commit. They don't even know what they're about. They're, it's called try and learn, learn and learn and uh, learn and develop. So, so Dave brought that's up why, that's why open source is having such a huge impact in the cloud. It's easy to try. It's easy to throw away if it doesn't work. Well, let's take let's take the CIA. Okay, CIA just went with Amazon over IBM, and they actually went to court, and the judge ruled that you have. To, it's actually a better product. That the judge saying Amazon's a better product. So now the CIA is government. How does the government change their consumption pattern? I mean, to me, I find that amazing. So you mentioned tripwires and IT nuances. The CIA is moving to Amazon on a fully consumed cloud basis. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's. I mean, why? Because I mean, the government has been under such a microscope for all of its consumption habits. And talk about data centers where you could get whatever you wanted and you didn't even have to use it. That that's been the government forever. Uh, I just got back from a long tour of a bunch of government agencies, and they've all they're changing much faster even than the enterprise is changing, because. They realize that they've got to change the relationship they have with their customers. You can't tell us you want 50 servers, you don't know what you're going to do with them, you want them forever. Uh, you're going to have to tell me what you want them for, how long you're going to use them, and where your budget's coming from next month. So cloud is actually good for the governments. Excellent Absolutely. for the government. What's the big driver there? Just compliance, showing reports, being audited, showing actually performance or the above? Performing government? for citizens? Yeah. Um, so really, it's the oversight. Meeting mandates. Absolutely. Uh, you look, at, look, at the, uh, look at the fiasco with healthcare.gov, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, that fantastic. was done the old style. It was done the old-fashioned way. So that's a, that's a tipping point. So I mean, obviously you said faster than the enterprise. That is actually proves the democratization piece of this, doesn't it? Well, the, actually, and the other thing that's driving governments that's important is, you mentioned, do more with less. Because the budgets in the government yeah. are going down across the world. And right. at the same time, there's a huge amount of data. You're trying to improve service. You're trying to solve public health problems. You know, all, that, all those issues don't go away. And you're trying to use technology to, to, to be more effective. You so. guys are awesome. I'm getting the hook here. We haven't even talked about Google. We're at the Google show here, but we're really breaking down some of the nuances. So talk about Google real quick. Let's summarize mm -hmm. this segment up. You guys are great. Uh, Forrester uh, guys here and bringing it down. Google is not new to this. They've been at four years now. They launched at I.O. four years ago, kind of quietly, almost like, who are those guys snapping lines out, surveying the landscape, those right. geeks out there, yeah. you know, with the spinning thing, Google Street View. I mean, they're mapping out cloud. It's almost as if now the parachute guys are dropping in, the army of Google with muscle is coming in. Do you guys see it that way? And what should people look for in their moves relative to the competitors? We've seen, we've, we do a lot of developer surveying, and we've, for, for consistently since we started years ago. Google's always been up there as a top three cloud provider. Um, it's AWS, Microsoft, and Google in that order. It's been consistent forever. Um, Google is... In that order. In that order. Yeah. It's been that, way for, it's been that way for a long, long time. Google, it seems, has really established a great position in, in consumer-oriented uh, apps. We see that all the yeah, time. Android, you can ask, um, yeah. Yep. And, you know, and, and it extended with Android. Um, all the announcements here, it's all good stuff. It's all it all builds out, you know, their position gives it gives the customer more flexibility, more uh, and more uh, uh, performance and more ability for compliance and hybrid and so forth. So it's all it's all good stuff. Some of it's catch up. They have to build out their services mm -hmm. to keep up yeah. with with the range that Amazon. There's has, some check boxes, obviously. table stakes, right? Definitely. That's right. And they also don't come with a set of, of core enterprise developers that are, are are locked into their community like Microsoft has. You know mm -hmm. that have been working closely with Microsoft for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think taking the lead on, on containerization is a great thing to do yeah. because it's such a hot topic with developers right now. Yeah. And what, what Google can bring to the table is they run more containers than anybody else right now. They have a cool factor. Google has the cool factor. IBM, <laughs> you know, look at IBM Blue Mix, and you're a developer today, you're like, Doesn't Blue Mix I want to be cool? associated with Blue Mix or, or Amazon or Google. I mean, Microsoft would be look. I mean, so to them, Microsoft might be lower in the cool factor relative to IBM, but like IBM is really struggling 
to get developers right now yeah, because but you know, it's, they're marketing the hell out of it, but people just aren't showing up. I've been, up, I've been looking at the surveys and I've been looking at the yeah. seats. Yeah. You go to the sessions, you say the Blue Mix session. No, you're right. They're, they're, but they've, they're, they're basically early. Blue Mix is really early. Um, Softlayer different. Softlayer was a going business when they bought it, but Google's got how many years yeah. on an, on IBM's cloud offering, and that and yep. that, that peop, having people bang on it for years and years and years really matters a lot. Yeah. What does IBM have? But I'll also say in the horse race that, that traditional tech companies like IBM and HP and even VMware, they entered the cloud through the IT department and thought mm -hmm. that was going to be the buyer. Mm -hmm. Amazon, Microsoft entered cloud through the developer buyer. It was mm -hmm. a new buyer, and I think that puts the traditional tech players with their cloud platforms slightly behind the people who are currently the buyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and HP's trying to be cooler, you see IBM trying to be cooler, that's kind of the shift. What are those guys, IBM and HP, VMware's looking pretty good right now, they have good market share, yep. they have a hip factor going on, VMware's always packed, as you guys know, very active community, so I think they're yep. dialed in. I'm not worried about VMware too much. IBM and HP, on the other hand, have huge muscle, but can they direct the punch into the market? So what do they have to do, guys? They to, have to, to make cloud relevant to their traditional workloads and their traditional customers. And they have to find a niche, essentially. It's odd to say that <laughs> for exactly. big companies, but that's where they're at. They got to find a niche. It's probably in and these, fortify that position. Exactly. That's right. And work really well. IBM is obviously showing that they're they're willing to work with some of these other leaders as an integration point, which is very healthy. Right. That's what they ought to really be doing. Yeah, and I think IBM's got a great strategy. I think they're getting dinged right now. I think she inherited a lot of baggage. Uh, HP, on this hand, they got a clean sheet of paper. I'm getting the hook here. Okay. <laughs> guys, we'd like to go along. These are the top analysts in the industry. Uh, uh, guys, really appreciate it coming on theCUBE. Thank um, Thanks very much. We're breaking it down here. Google Cloud Developer Forum here. Just the Cloud Platform Live is uh, Google Cloud Platform Live, GPC. Uh, live, Google, uh, G -C -P. G -C -P live. that's the hashtag, uh, go to crowdchat.net, check it out. We're here at the Forrester Analysts, who are doing all the surveying of the landscape with customers and analyzing all the horses on the track in the business. Uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, HP, IBM, EMC, VMware, all jockeying for that position. We always bring in a NASCAR analogy with uh, the whole brawl that went on this week if you follow NASCAR. Um, certainly right. an exciting time, guys. Appreciate it. We'll Thank be right you. back after this short break. This is theCUBE live in San Francisco at the Google conference. We'll be right back. Thank you.